I quit my job when I was 52, six years ago, and I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have any money. I hadn't got any savings. I was relying on my husband to support me. And to his credit, he was really, really supportive most of the time. But you know, there's something that goes on in the brain when the pain of staying in a situation you're not happy with becomes greater than the perceived fear of doing something else. That just means you have to do something. And in this video, I just wanted to really talk about what giving up my job at 52 meant and how I've survived ever since, whether it was a good move, whether it's something I regret. When I, when I turned 50, things kind of went a little bit awry anyway. I've talked about this in lots of other videos. Menopause, ADHD, the whole lot just came crashing down on me and I just had enough, I think. I think I'd had enough of trying to push through and trying to mask and pretend. I didn't have the, the vocabulary for all of this six years ago. But I think, looking back, I just, I'd had enough. My husband was coming out of the Air Force. He'd done 38 years in the Air Force, so his career had to come to an end. Um, but he was really ready for it too. He was ready to do something different and he knew he didn't want to work for anybody else again. He wanted to work for himself and have that freedom and that autonomy. And I think at the time, there was a lot of resentment in me that he was, he was getting to do something else. And I was still gonna be stuck in this job that I didn't particularly love and it's a civil service job a public service job and it wasn't the best paying job but the big pull for the public sector was well you get a good pension you know you, you're sorted for life if you have a civil service job and it's true, you know, the pension benefits are pretty good in relation, you know, to, to the pay. But the idea of spending another 15, 16, 17 years working before I could get my, my pension, just, it just didn't appeal at all. And the more I thought about it, the harder it was because I'd lost both my parents in my 20s. My mum was 54, my dad was 63. So life felt like it was running out. It felt like I was going to spend probably the most, the most important years of my life as I saw them working in a job I wasn't happy in. And it just, yeah, it just didn't make sense. So the pain, the pain of staying put was definitely, oh, it was definitely too big not to do something about it. So I made the decision to, to hand, my, hand in my re resignation. And I didn't have a plan. I didn't have another job to go to and the idea of applying for jobs just i don't know really didn't appeal that much it scared me if i'm honest so i set out without a plan without a plan at all and i will tell you i haven't regretted it for one moment not one moment i'm just going to sit down because there's a lot of people around and it's uh it's getting difficult to navigate all of the people and walk at the same time how's that okay i think that'll do yeah it was get it was getting i forgot what i was saying <laughs> i've lost lost my train of thought yes it was scary i didn't have a clue what i was going to do but i learned i've learned a few things in those six years looking back 
And the first thing is that we need so much less than we think we need. Thankfully, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not under any, any illusion that I was able to do this because financially my husband did put us in a position where we were stable and we could afford to not do without my pay for a little while. Not indefinitely, not if we wanted to have any quality of life, but I could take a pay cut temporarily and we knew we would still survive. And it did mean that, you know, we didn't have we didn't have holidays that first, that first year after I left work. I spent a lot of time working towards a business without a clue how to build a business. I kind of was thrown in, I, th I wasn't thrown in at the deep end, I threw myself in at the deep end and then had to try and figure out how to create a business, how to grow a business and I put a lot of time and effort into that. And I probably ended up working more towards my business than I did when I was working a job. So I certainly hadn't retired. I certainly wasn't one of these people who gave up their nine to five and took a year off and you know chilled out in the sun on the beach for a year. I didn't do that at all. I, I worked my ass off um, for very little reward in that first year. But there was, there were so many benefits, you know, suddenly I didn't have to get up and stress every morning about going into a job that I didn't enjoy. I didn't feel pressure. I, it was, oh, it's hard to explain. It was like this huge weight was lifted, just not having to go to work. And I was working, it wasn't like I wasn't working, I was working hard, I just didn't have that stress and the pressure. And the other thing that I, I discovered is that actually we don't need anywhere near as much, as many things. Our cost of living when we stop working drops, commuting costs and just the day-to-day -day costs of being in the workplace, buying lunch, buying coffees, throwing money into leaving presents and buying you know clothes for work and just all of the bits that you maybe don't take into consideration, nights out with your work pals and the, the costs actually came down which was good because we didn't have as much money coming in. But also I found over the last six years that my want for things has reduced. And the only thing I can think of, that, that the reason for that is because I think a lot of those things that I hankered for were numbing a, a sense of not enoughness in my life. Um, they were filling a gap that I wasn't filling from a, an emotional point of view. Um, I was definitely in the wrong job for a start, you know, just the whole um, civil service thing wasn't, wasn't right for me. But the things, I definitely think the things were filling a, a need or trying to fill a need and actually failing miserably because they were never quite enough. There was a definite sense, I think, of wanting to try and keep up with the Joneses, which is funny because my best friend's surname is Jones. I wasn't trying to keep up with that Joneses, but just trying to keep up with the, you know, keep up with appearances of, you know, the nice house and nice cars. And we, you know, we never had a brand new car. We we bought our first brand new car just a couple of years ago because, thankfully, my husband is very grounded and very sensible with, with our finances and I'm eternally grateful to him for that. But because he was that way, there were lots of things that I always hankered after that we didn't have because he wasn't prepared to put us into debt to have things. And that, that's such a sensible, wise, 
way of you know running your your life and I'm, I'm eternally grateful to him because left to me I'd have been buying all of the things and getting into debt and spending all the money just to fill this gap that I, I couldn't fill through through my work and, and feeling a sense of purpose. Just bear with me. Hi Katie. I'm really well, how are you? Literally I've been stuck in the house with this cold for a couple of weeks and I've just come out to the in park to do a little bit of videoing. Just got a video, uh, a, a, a YouTube video I want to record, but it doesn't matter whether I do it now or later. As long as it's before it gets dark, it really doesn't matter. All right, I'll see you soon. Just give me a buzz when you get to the car park and I'll make my way back to the cafe. No worries, look forward to it. Bye. You know, that's one of the benefits of not being tied to a job anymore. I just spoke to one of my friends. I, I texted her before I was uh, coming out today to just say, look, I'm coming to Neen Park. This is Neen Park in Peterborough, it's beautiful. And she doesn't live too far. So I just messaged her and said, look, if you've got five minutes, do you fancy um, meeting up for a coffee? She's self-employed, she gave up her job in a, uh, I don't know, she was late 40s or early 50s. And, um, we're just going to meet for a coffee ad hoc and you know when I was working I couldn't do that. Anyway you know moving on and my business did grow and I did get an income and I did find a purpose and it all was going really really well and there were times you know I had a small part-time job in between that I was sort of showing people around um, houses for a local estate agent so I was having to do little bits and pieces but there was something that I that we we both felt that we'd never had before and that was autonomy over our time autonomy over how we spend our days even now that my husband is a, an absolute workaholic and I can't imagine him ever fully retiring he works for himself and he picks and chooses the work he wants to do and he tries to work sort of four hours a day maximum so he's got time to enjoy walking our two dogs so he's got time to go for a run or to go and train he's very fit and active and we've got more time to do things together that we we didn't have time to do before he was in the military so not only were we always working? Some of the times we weren't even together, you know, he was, he was at a different end of the country. And now we get to do things together. We, we dance yesterday afternoon from two till four, we went to a dance in the middle of the afternoon. We can choose when we want to go on holiday. We're not tied to certain holidays. We're not having to try and fit our holidays into um, work plans or you know we, we, we've got autonomy I think that's the best word for it we've got autonomy now that we didn't have and actually we don't spend every waking moment together anything anything but really a lot of the time we're we're not together but when we are together we get quality time and we get to choose when that time is in the last few years we've been able to do much more travel than we've ever been able to do before and yes We've had to earn money to do that, you know, we're not, we're not retired, we are both working, but we're working on our terms and that is so different to where we were, that kind of feeling like we were living our life on somebody else's agenda. Now we get to live our life on our own agenda, which is just, it's priceless, it, it's really hard to, to get across just how incredible it is to have the freedom of choice in our lives. It, over the last six years I think I've, I've learned that if you make a shift everything's going to be okay. Everything works out for the best and the worries that you have that you won't be able to manage, you always manage, you always find a way, you cut your cloth according to your um, I don't know what the saying is, cut your cloth according to your means. So, you know, I've just made the decision to wind my business down 
and moved more into a kind of a semi-retired lifestyle, similar to my husband really, I can't imagine ever not working. But I realised that I was kind of, I wasn't loving what I was doing it anymore and it was time again for another change. And yeah, the same old fears came back and the same worries and doubts came back. But I know I can trust the process and I can trust in the fact that whatever I choose to do, everything will be okay. We'll cope with whatever happens. This is what I love doing. I love just coming out and having the time to go for walks, bring the camera, talk to you guys through this, this lens. I'm definitely an introvert and just having the solitude of sitting here talking to the camera is, it, it's enjoyable. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the freedom to do the things I want to do on my terms. I don't think I want to stop working completely. You know, tomorrow I'm traveling down to London. I might even do a video on it. I'm traveling down to London to meet a, a colleague and we're doing some work for a, a company. And it's, you know, it, it's where I make my living. <clears throat> but I want to do less of that and more of this. And I feel as if I now know that I can make that choice and it will be okay, I can, I can do that and it will be okay. I suppose the purpose of making this video, apart from the fact that I realise coming out today with no work to do and having the freedom to just come and wander and do my own thing, I couldn't, at, at the age of 58, I wouldn't have that freedom if I hadn't taken the risk and, and made the shift when I was 52 to quit the nine to five and take a chance on myself that everything would be okay. And it was. I hope you found that useful. And I suppose my hope is that if you're watching this and you're desperately listening to the voice in your head saying you need something different you don't need you don't want to be doing this job for the rest of your life but you haven't quite got the courage yet to make that jump I guess my message is make the jump and it will be okay it will be okay I'm not entirely sure why I'm welling up, but it will be okay. Talk to you soon.